Well, that was pretty pointless as the ball just bounced over the other side of the green. I actually struck that. Pretty good for me. So, despite being a really nice morning, but a little bit frosty, I am going to learn nothing about my short game. Stood out here, so I'm going to head back inside. So we've come inside because obviously the conditions are not good outside. So whether it's been cold, wet, okay, your winter conditions are not the time to want to be working on your short game. Obviously, the ground conditions get so wet or so adverse, you know, it could be freezing cold, so the ball lands on the green, bounces over. You're trying to use the bounce at that point. The ground is that hard, it's bouncing off it. Or the ground is so soft that you play a shot and you only miss it by the smallest and smallest of margins and you duff it, you double hit it. You see all sorts of problems coming. And I've heard from tour players say, never work at your short game during the winter as that can start to develop the yips. Okay, So if you're one of these players who really struggles with your chipping and short game, don't use the winter to work at it. Okay outside work at your technique on the range off a mat or at home okay some of us have got horrendous weather during the winter deep in snow can't get out you could do it at home so the thing is what can you work at that can benefit your chipping surely indoors because everything about chipping is purely outcome where does it land how's the ball react where's it finishing close to the hole but there's got to be a technique that backs that up okay so the technique that backs that up is where we're going to look at so if you can work at that over the coming weeks and months ready before the start of the season you've got a good start to allow you to hopefully then improve your short game when it's going to matter most to your score in those summer months so a couple of common denominators in all chipping styles okay you know, not trying to say that there's only one way to chip here. You know, we see, you know, you've got the likes of Steve Stricker, very firm armed, very little wrist action. You've got the likes of Ernie and Phil Mickelson, who are very, very handsy. You've got the likes of Zach Johnson, who's got less wrist, but very body driven. And then you've got the likes of Tiger and Rory, who use the pivot a lot. But for certain shots, we'll have a fair bit of hand action. There's probably four or five different styles there. But what we will see is we will never, ever tend to see any of those styles. That right arm gets away from the body. Now, the reason is if that right arm gets away from the body, we'll grab that club on the way down. So what that would mean is that's going to lead to a bit of a down cock or that there's an over acceleration. So from here, accelerating and then having to uncock those wrists. Really a lot of bad stuff can tend to happen in terms of that strike. So we never want to let that go away. The first thing you can just work at, just at home simply, making sure that right arm's staying in. So as you're making that movement back, you're simply trying to get the motion of the body and the club back and through together and feeling that right elbow is staying in. Whether it's hinging a lot or just a little, it's all going to be dependent on what you like to do. Okay, I don't want to see, you don't want to see too high hands either that's going to lead to a big club head movement for a relatively short shot. So you've got the hands and the pivot and the elbow all traveling similar distances. And if anything, think about maybe the hands working on a relatively tight arc. I mean, they're not going to go on this big wide arc. They're going to work on a circle as close to you as you can get it. Second one would be on the way through, okay? So whether you're going to be trying to play a chip and run, you know, so the basic chip shot here, or trying to use the bounce a little, engaging it this way, okay? What we're looking at is, what is the common theme in both of those? Well, what I want you to be able to do is make sure that your body is still traveling all of the time. So on the way through, that body will pivot through, and whether I've got that right hand working under this way, like I very often like to finish here, or whether you're finishing with it more here, okay? Both of these styles have still got the chest and the shoulder clearing out the way in conjunction with the club. So that shoulder will always clear out the way so the hands can come through. You see a lot of people will make a long backswing, they'll stop on it, or keep the shoulders still and end up flicking with the wrists 
or trying to just drive the arms on their own. All three of those are going to be so, so, so inconsistent for you. So what we're trying to do is get you to make sure that you've got the movement of your body and your club matching so you get a nice little pivot movement. So I've got this, kindly been given this really nice lightweight ball. It's called the floppy. One of my students actually gave me this, okay? So it's like a fabric golf ball, okay? And it's great for practicing indoors because it's not going to damage anything, okay? So it's got a couple of like little kind of weight type things inside it. You can hear the sound. So what you could do is you could simply work at home just on the technique, okay? If you can't get outside, just working at how this could work. So you could maybe just even use anything that's going to be small enough like that, but I think this is pretty good, okay? So the idea is that what you're wanting to do is you don't want to be thinking, letting this arm get away here, Okay, so you don't want to be going, getting back there and stopping because you can hear there, hit the mat so badly, it was awful. Imagine that outside. I mean, I could double hit it, anything. Okay, so that's not what I'll be wanting to do. Okay, what we're aiming to try and make sure that we're doing is, you could see getting that arm away is really leading to a big hit down. I'm going to make sure that arm stays relatively close to me. Okay, and then on the way through, just going to try and get that shoulder moving out the way, so it's the body moving back and through. So even though I caught the bounce a little bit early there, okay, on the grass in the summer, that would still be a good outcome. For Matt, that's going to be on a good outcome. In the winter, that would be a horror shot outside, okay? I mean, I missed that by a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. So in the summer, it just wouldn't have had as much spin, but it'd still be pretty good. It would end up nestling in relatively close. Winter time, this would be a disaster. So this is the time of year to do all of that work, technique-wise on the range, or movement work inside, or even working with one of these types of balls in the house where you're not gonna get a telling off by the missus or anyone else for practicing inside because there's no chance of you damaging anything. So guys, thanks for watching the video. The message is, if the ground conditions aren't summer-like, apart from if you live in California, I don't, I'm sure some of you do, you can still work at that game outside. If your ground conditions are anything other than summer-like, don't worry about that strike. Do it on the driving range, do it on the mat, and get that strike, get that practice, and learn that technique, okay? So therefore, you aren't going to be bothered about that outcome, and this will then stand you in great stead for the summer months. Thanks for watching. If you please make some comments below, stuff you'd like to see going forwards. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Thanks for watching and talk with you again soon.